So it's interesting because I went through my uh, Jewish Observer, for those of you that remember the Jewish Observer, 1999. We were all much younger then. It was when they put on, they spoke about kids off the derech, kids at risk, on the, uh, on, the, on the cover. And I read an article by Rabbi Yitzhak Mitnick, who at that time already, many, many years ago, was already on the streets and was helping people and was out there. And uh, he wrote this article, which I think is really amazing. He's a big tzaddik, and he did a lot of good in this uh, kids at risk uh, thing. So he has this whole, uh, it's called an, an unorthodox approach for the orthodox teen. And I'm just going to skip around to the parts that I like the, the most. It's all a very good article. And he wrote, What the Mashkiach did. This past winter, on the coldest Friday night of the year, I walked to Bar Park to attend the Tish of my Rebbe, the Mashkiach Harav Don Segel Shlita. After listening to inspiring Divrei Teira and Nigunim, I mentioned to Reb Dun that an open house was in progress nearby. I explained to him that his presence there at the open house might, positive, might positively influence some boys. Without hesitating, he bid the gathering a Guten Shabbos, and off we went into the extraordinarily frigid weather. Suffice it to say that the Mashkiach made the walk with great difficulty as the wind chill factor rendered the temperature 20 below zero. For those of you who know what he looks like, he's a very frail person. So this is really, really mysterious nefesh. For those readers not familiar with the term open house, let me briefly explain. When a teenager learns that his parents are going out of town for the weekend, he invites all his friends for a Shabbos of fun. Generally, Chil Shabbos, promiscuity, not to mention Geneva, drunkenness and drug use are rampant. I explained all this to Rivdan Segel, but he was not deterred. To the contrary, he went with alacrity. Upon entering the house, we immediately heard the music blasting from the stereo. Rabdan remarked that we shouldn't say anything about it, so they wouldn't turn it off and be over an Isser of Chil Shabbos. When the girls realized that Rabdan was there, they scurried off to various rooms upstairs or stayed in the kitchen. Four boys waited in line to talk to the Mashkiach. I watched as Rabdan spoke to them for about a half an hour, as if they were friends, encouraging them with his inimitable varmkeit. Although one of the boys was sub subsequently thrown out of his yeshiva for drug use, he continued on in a local Torah establishment and completed Masech Desmakis. The meeting with the Mashkiach surely left an indelible impression on this boy's young mind. Reb Dun told me, and this is what I wanted to mention, Reb Dun told me that he sacrificed his own ruchnias for the benefit of the boy's ruchnias that were there. If he felt it important and urgent enough to put his neshama on the line, shouldn't we? The ability to help these boys is not limited to people like Rav Dan Segel Shlita. And Askin, whom we'll call Yechil, heard about the open house only one hour before Shabbos. Instead of making a tumult, which wouldn't have helped anyone, he dashed out to the local takeout store and spent $300 on various Shabbos staples. Kugel, farfel, cold cuts, chicken, chulant. He returned with the food the only wholesome food in the whole house. He came back again after his own Suda and sang Zmiris with these people, inter inter interspersing the songs with words of encouragement and inspiration. Actions such as these build trust in these children and help them open up. Yechiel is not a Rav or a Magad Shir. He is just a simple computer programmer. This is the way to a teenager's neshama, with hearts of love, not tough love. This was over 20 years ago.